Let's now try to answer weekly math challenge 13. So we have a diagram given to us, which is always nice. And we have a square ABCD and equilateral triangle ABK. And we know K is located within the square. And that's telling us our vertex K is this point right here. So let me mark that. So we know that's K. Let's continue on. We have square EFGH, that's this square inside, right here. And we have ENF on side AB, GNH on side BK and side AK. They are showing us that in the diagram. That's good. Let's read on. The process of drawing an enclosed equilateral triangle, then an enclosed square is repeated infinitely many times. So you can tell you're drawing another, you have square EFGH, you're drawing another equilateral triangle, you're drawing another square, another equilateral triangle, and you're doing this infinitely many times. Okay, so I think we kind of understand the question. Now, what do we have to do? The sum of the areas of the triangles is 5 times square root of 3 plus 9. So the sum of infinitely many, infinitely many areas of infinitely many equilateral triangles sum up to 5 times square root of 3 plus 9. And you may say, how can infinitely many things sum up to one finite number? Well, think about 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 116 plus this series, this geometric series that goes on infinitely. Well, this geometric series is equal to 1. And the reason is, if you can think of this entire thing as being 1, this entire thing as being 1, 1 half is simply half of this, so that's 1 half, and 1 fourth is another half of the half, 1 eighth is going to be this, 1 sixteenth is going to be this, and as you add up all of these half pieces infinitely many times, you're going to fill the entire square, which is 1. So, infinitely many things can sum up to a finite value. Of course, that's not always a thing. For, for example, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus, that's not going to be finite. That's going to approach positive infinity. It's going to increase without bound. But in our case, it's going to converge. And let me write down converge. Converge means infinitely many things come to a finite value. So in our case, this thing converges, while this thing does not converge. And if it does not converge, you say it diverge. Well, those are technical terms you don't have to know. But I thought it, it's always good to know some vocab. Now let's try to actually answer the question. When the area of the square EFGH is divided by 96, they are giving us a very specific number, 96. The result is in the form A plus B times square root of 3. And we want to find AB. So we want to extract some information from the sum of the areas of the equilateral triangle and use that to find the area of the square EFGH. GH. Okay, so how can we find the sum of one equilateral triangle? So let me try to draw an equilateral triangle right here. How do you find area of one of them with side lengths of x, let's say? Well, you can draw, you can drop down a perpendicular, and now you have 30, 60, 90 triangle that you're creating, and you have x over 2 right here, and because of 30, 60, 90 triangle property and the ratio of sides, you know this side, this side is going to be square root of 3 times x over 2. So we know this side, or the height of the entire triangle is x times square root of 3 over 2. So our base, our base length is x, our height is x times square root of 3 over 2. So area of equilateral triangle, area of equilateral triangle with side lengths of x is going to be, you're going to multiply base and height and divide by 2. Multiplying base and height gets us x squared times square root of 3 over 2, and dividing that by 2 gets us dividing by 4. So that's the area of the equilateral triangle with x being the length of a side. Okay, so we are going to have to use it, so let's keep this in mind. This is area of one equilateral triangle. We want to add up areas of the infinitely many triangles. So we gotta somehow 
relate area of one of the triangle with the area of the second or the next largest triangle somehow. So we gotta somehow relate area of this orange equilateral triangle to this red equilateral triangle and somehow find the relationship between them, add them up as an infinite series and find the sum. So let's try to. Okay, so let me redraw this orange equilateral triangle, triangle ABK below. So let me draw this orange triangle. And let's say we have side lengths of X. And you have a square inside. Let me make that blue. You have a square inside and you have another equilateral triangle residing within. So we have something going on. So we know side lengths of the large equilateral triangle is X. And let's say the side length of the of this equilateral triangle is simply simply k. How can you find k in terms of x? So you want to find k in terms of x. So if someone gives you a value of x, let's say x is 5, you want to be able to find k using this value somehow. So you want to find the equation in terms of x that can be used to find k. And that's going to allow us to relate areas of this infinitely many triangle set. Okay. And how can we? And the easiest way, in my opinion, is to use the 30, 60, 90 triangle property one more time by dropping down this perpendicular as shown, as shown. And we can use 30, 60, 90 triangle because this is 60 degrees and this is 30 degrees. Well, let's try to, let's try to work this step by step from what we know and try to get what we do not know. Okay. So we know this length is k, and since, let me make this orange, since you know this length and this length has to be the same, by you can prove it using congruent triangles, I'm not going to go that far in this video. Okay, so we know that we can find length of this side, let me make the orange, we can find the length of this. And how can we find the length? Well, the entire length, the entire length is x. And you want to take away k, and when, once you take away k, you have two of these orange segments, and you want to divide by two. And that's giving you the length of this orange segment, and you have 30, 60, 90 triangle inside. Let me highlight the yellow. You have this 30, 60, 90 triangle, so you can find this, the side length of the square. You can find this blue side. That's going to be, that's going to be, that's going to be square root of 3 times this value, x minus k over 2. So x minus k over 2. And since you know square, all of the sides of the squares have the same length, and k is one of the lengths of the square, you know this thing has to be equal to k. Okay, now can we solve for k? Yes, we can. Let's start by multiplying by 2 thirds. Multiplying by 2 thirds. So 2 over square root of 3, I should say. So square root of 3 and 2's cancel out. So you want to multiply by 2 over square root of 3. And that's going to get us x minus k is equal to 2 times k over square root of 3. Let's move k over to the other side. x is equal to k plus 2k over square root of 3. Let's factor out k. So you have k times 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 over square root of 3. And you want to find k. So you can divide by 1 plus 2 times 2 over square root of 3. So k is equal to x over 1 plus 2 over square root of 3. Let me simplify this just a bit. Let's start by multiplying by square root of 3 to top and the bottom. So you have x times square root of 3 over square root of 3 plus 2. Or 2 plus square root of 3. Let me just switch this so it's easier for, our, for the next step of rationalization. So instead of writing square root of 3 plus 2, I'm just switching them. And now let's try to rationalize this fraction, get rid of square root in the denominator by multiplying by 2 minus square root of 3. And it's going to simplify pretty nicely. Down below, you're going to have 4 minus 3, which is simply 1. So the fraction goes away, in fact. And up top, you have x times square root of 3 is going to distribute, getting us 2 times square root of 3 minus 3. Okay, so we have found something. We have k equals 2 x times 2 times square root of 3 minus 3. So if someone gives you x, you can find k. Now what do we know? We know area of a single triangle is x times a square root of 3 over 4. We have shown that. 
before and we want to add up the areas of the infinitely many triangles. The area of the first triangle is going to be x squared times square root of 3 over 4. Area of the next triangle is going to be the side length squared times square root of 3 over 4. But the side length of the next largest equilateral triangle is going to be x times 2 times square root of 3 minus 3, as we have shown. And the next equilateral triangle, you're going to multiply this twice, because you multiplied once to go to the next largest triangle. You're going to multiply it again to go to the next largest triangle. So you're going to have x times 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. No, you want to square the entire thing. And then you want to multiply by square root of 3 over 4. And this process is going to continue infinitely many times. Now, how can we simplify this? Well, you have x squared times square root of 3 over 4 here. And you have x squared times square root of 3 over 4. x squared square root of 3 over 4. So we can factor that out. x squared times square root of 3 over 4 times 1 plus, And you have 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared plus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 to the 2 times 2 or to the 4th power. And this thing is going to continue infinitely many times. Plus, uh, let me write one more term, 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 to the 6 and so on. So, how can you evaluate this infinite sum inside? And it realized that this is infinite geometric series. Infinite geometric series. It's let me write infinite too. And geometric series is when you're multiplying by something every time. In our case, you're multiplying by 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. Each time, you're multiplying by 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. The term you're adding is getting multiplied by this factor. And whenever something is getting multiplied by the same factor, you call it geometric series. Okay, so how can we find the value of this? One way is to use a pretty well-known formula, a over 1 minus r, where r is the common ratio, r is the common ratio, ratio, in our case that's 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared, and a is the first term, or simply 1, but that's, you, some of you may not know this formula, so I'm not going to use it. Let me do it like this. Let's say, not x, since we already have x, let's say z is equal to, the thing you're trying to find, 1 plus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared, plus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 to the fourth, infinitely many times. Okay, and now let me try multiplying this by 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. Because multiplying this thing by 2 times square root of 3, 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared is going to get you. 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared, that's when you multiply that factor to 1, plus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 to the 4th, then it's when you multiply it to 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared, and you're going to have this infinitely many times. So you can simply subtract these two equations, subtract them to cancel out all of these infinitely many factors, and you're going to get z minus z times 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared is 1, also known as z times 1 minus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared is 1, or z is simply 1 over 1 minus 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. Realize you can get the exact same thing by using this formula. Our a is 1, so you have a over 1 minus r, and our r is 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared. So these two are basically the same thing, and you can even prove this formula using the logic I just made. Also, it's important to realize that 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 squared is less than 1 and greater than negative 1, which means the terms you're adding in the geometric series is going to decrease in magnitude as you add them up. Anyway, anyway, now we know z is equal to this thing, let's try to simplify it before we substitute it back in. That's 1 over 1 minus 2 times square root of 3 squared gets you 4 times 3 or 12, and minus 3 squared gets you 9, so you have 12 plus 9 or 21, and you also have 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 times negative 3 times 2, which is negative 12 times square root of 3. So let's, let me rewrite this. That's 1 over negative 12 square root of 3 minus 20, 
and you can you can let me let me actually just write that in so we have x x squared times square root of 3 over 4 times times this 1 over negative square root of 12 let me write that 1 over negative no 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 this thing should be positive square root 12 times square root of 3 when you distribute the negative that's my mistake and you're going to have positive 12 times square root of 3 minus 20 okay so let's try to keep on simplifying this if we can from this you can factor out 4 so you can get x squared times square root of 3 over 16 times 1 over 3 times square root of 3 minus 5 and now you can now you can rationalize this by multiplying by 3 times square root of 3 plus 5 to top and the bottom and that's going to get us x squared square root of 3 over 16 times 3 times square root of 3 plus 5 divided by 3 times square root of 3 times 3 times square root of 3 gets you 27 minus 5 plus 5 gets you negative 25 so you have 2 below and you have x squared times let's distribute so you have 9 plus 5 times square root of 3 all over 2 times 16 or 32 so you have this thing okay so let me write that x squared x squared times 9 plus 5 times square root of 3 over 32 is the sum of the areas of the all the equilateral triangle and what do we know we know this value is equal to we know this value is equal to 5 times square root of 3 plus 9 so let's go back so we know this value is equal to 5 times square root of 3 plus 9 so you know this value is equal to 5 times square root of 3 plus 9 and realize you have that precisely inside this fraction right here so you can cancel this out and multiplying by 32 gets you x squared is equal to 32 beautiful so we know x x is square root of 32 so let's go back and this was x let me rewrite this the side a b this side was x and we know x squared is 32 or x is square root of 32 but what do we want to find when the area of square e f g h is divided by 96 realize that square e f g h, g h has side lengths of k and we can find k in terms of x uh, we know x is you know x is square root of 32 also known as also known as 4 times square root of 2 and you know k can be found by plugging x into this equation 4 times square root of 2 times 2 times square root of 3 minus 3 also known as 8 times square root of 6 minus two, let, let me do it like this let me get let me just leave 4 outside and let's just multiply square root of 2 2 times square root of 6 minus 3 times square root of 2 so that's that's our value of k and we want to find the area of square efgh which is simply going to be k squared because you square the side so area of square efgh area of square efgh is going to be k squared or you're going to square 4 times this thing so you're going to square this thing the entire thing 4 squared gets you 16 and squaring 2 times square root of 6 minus 3 times square root of 2 let's try it out you have 2 times square root of 6 squared which is 4 times 6 or 24 negative 3 times square root of 2 squared which is 9 times 2 or 18 and you have negative 12 square root of 12 and you can even simplify this 16 times 42 minus well that's going to be 24 times square root of 3 okay now we can factor another another what can we factor out we can factor out 2 32 times 21 oh you can just factor out 6 that may be the easiest let's get 6 outside this fraction so getting 6 out you have 96 times 7 minus 8 not 8 4 times square root of 3 so that's the area of square efgh we are so close and when you divide it by 96 you have a plus b times square root of 3 and you want to find a times b when you divide this by 96 this 96 goes away and you have a plus b times square root of 3 a is 7 b is negative 4 so a times b is equal to negative 28. so the solution to this weekly math challenge question 
is negative 28.